So it's World EV Day 2021, a day to celebrate the electric car. The thing is, though, that making the switch to electric can seem quite daunting. So it's really important that you get clear answers to all the questions that you've got. So to get some answers, let's go straight to the woman at the top, Transport Minister Rachel McLean. Morning, Rachel. Morning, Ginny. <laughs> Happy World EV Day. And to you too. Thank you. Now, I know we're both EV drivers, aren't we? Both, uh, both drive electric cars. My first one was an electric VW Golf and it was over 20 years ago. Can you remember the first electric car that you drove? Well, actually, it was much more recently than yours, Ginny. I only got my electric car about two years ago now, so just before lockdown. And I've actually got a Jaguar because I'm a West Midlands MP, so it seemed like the right thing to do. But I absolutely love it. Why did you get one? Come on, did you get one because of the job? Or did you get, <laughs> you kind of, you, you kind of had to do, or did you get one because you felt ready to make the switch? To be honest, it was a combination of both. I've been interested in the whole kind of decarbonisation agenda for some time ever since I've actually been in Parliament and started to understand the need for it and the contribution that cars and transport make. Um, and so, yeah, it was just the final push that I needed to, to go electric. As a journalist who spent a very, very long time only driving petrol and diesel cars, I had loads of reservations mm. um, about electric cars. And also, I'm not afraid to admit, quite a lot of worries as well and concerns. What kind of things were you worried about before you made the switch? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was. I, I did as well, because it, it's a big change on a practical level. And I don't have sort of very much time to kind of if you like, my job is so busy, I don't have much time to think about um, what sort of behaviour change I might need to, to carry out to make it work. It needed to be something that I could make work in my lifestyle without too many massive changes. And actually, I, I, I was worried about that, but I, it's completely unfounded worry. It, it's fitted straight into my life. Uh, I'm able to do all the journeys that I need to or, or want to do. Um, and just that thought of, you know, just plug in, go to bed, wake up, that's it, you're ready to go, you're fully charged. It's, it's just freedom I can't describe. What do you enjoy most uh, now that you're an electric car driver? What element of ownership is it that you most appreciate? I think honestly, Jenny, it is never having to go to the petrol station. It's that that freedom from. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, not only the you know it's, it's obviously the cost. It's the kind of whole experience. It's the hassle. It's the you know thinking about about it. Uh, but it's also you know knowing that you're not actually contributing to the stuff being dug out of the ground that really we really need to leave in the ground in order to protect our planet. And you do eat a lot, uh, a lot less chocolate, don't you? <laughs> yeah, and crisps. And crisps. <laughs> yes, very much so. Honestly, I don't know what it is. Car journeys and 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 service stations, particularly on motorways, I have to buy crisps. I know. And you go in there and you pay for your petrol, and all of a sudden you realise you've got three packets of crisps and two boxes yeah. of chocolates and an ice cream. You didn't need any of it, did you? <laughs> Charging does feel very different, doesn't it, to just popping to the filling station and filling up with petrol or diesel? Um, I always say to people, you know, you don't expect to have a petrol station in your garden or in, on your drive. And as soon as you make that mindset shift, actually everything falls into place. And of course, you know, getting up in the morning to a full tank of fuel, as you say, it's not something you would expect. Waking up to a full tank of, you know, of, of electricity is brilliant. Yeah. But that's not an option for everybody. No. So that's where the on-street charging becomes really important, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. It wants to be something that everybody can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. and, and lots of people in this country don't have their own drive or their own garden or their own garage. So it is vital that, that we tackle that. And we have a range of different policies that we're making available to people. Westminster was an early adopter when it came to public charging, wasn't it? And actually, you can see them all, all around the place here. But there's a stat that always really disappoints me, is that there are more charging points in this tiny area of Westminster than there are in the whole of the West Midlands, mm. um, an area you know very well. What are you doing to make sure that certain areas of the country, rural areas in particular, don't get left behind in this switch? I think it's really important and actually I, I do recognise that stat but I think it's changed even since that stat was produced because the West Midlands is now the got the fastest growth in charge point installations actually in the whole country. Um, but you're right to say it needs to go further, it needs to go right across the whole country. Um, we have a, a plan and a strategy about how we're going to boost that. It will take government funding and also it really takes a lot of hand-holding for those local authorities because mm -hmm. it's not always a straightforward thing for them to do 
to apply to the sort of different pots of money. What can people watching this do if they think, well, actually, I haven't got access to off-street charging. I'd really like one locally to me. What, what practical action can they take? Well, the first thing is just get in touch with your local council and ask them, have they actually accessed the government grants? It's people power. If you start demanding it, then that's what politicians will have to deliver. Mm -hmm. I mean, people power is really leading this switch to electric, isn't it? Do you worry that the infrastructure is not going to keep up? I am very optimistic and confident. And I probably would say that because it's <laughs> it's my day job and, and I can see how much work is, is going on, actually, to make sure that we do have the infrastructure. And I always say to people, this is a, if, if you like, it is an early market. And every time you have a new product or something that's new to the market, it's not a perfect situation and it does take a while to catch up. But I, I am incredibly confident that we are going to get to where we need to go. And the reason I'm confident about it is because I can already see it happening very, very quickly. We are seeing the big manufacturers, even the oil companies and a lot of the power companies putting their own cash into actually upgrading the existing charge points, installing new charge points because it makes sense for them commercially. And I think that's how we're really going to get that switch really motoring. We should be proud of what we've got at the moment. We have got one of the best networks of, of charging points in the whole of Europe. And I think people can have that confidence that they are going to be able to find a charger when they need one. GridServe have just recently bought out Ecotricity. They are basically going through every single Ecotricity charger and they are replacing all those with rapids and they will take contactless payment. Yeah. And I think that will make a real difference to people's experiences as they're driving around the country. So how did that feel for you personally? Because I know that that was a bit of a thorn in your side, the fact that the motorway um, network just, you know, there, there were issues with it. It let mm. people down a lot. I always want to do more. And, and you know, I'm very sensitive to what people say when, when they, they criticise what the government are doing or what's happening. I always want to sort of fix it. So, yes, I'm pleased that I'm... It's great that we can point to really practical things that people can see and touch and say, look here, you know, this is a charge point. That <laughs> These are much better than what was here before. I don't want people to get the impression that we are leaving it to the market because we're not. We know the market won't mm -hmm. fix it completely. What we need to do with government and taxpayers' money is make sure that we've got the charging infrastructure in the places where it's perhaps not so commercially viable. That's how you're going to make sure that some of those rural areas are not left behind and yes. they don't end yes. up with charging points just because actually it doesn't work commercially. Precisely, because if you've got something that's not used very often, perhaps they're not going to get the return on that. So we definitely do need to really you know, keep on with that work with those local councils. But also, um, we can be very imaginative about how the grants work. We've recently reformed the way some of the grants work so that, um, for example, your village hall can apply for a grant or a local B&B, &B, an Airbnb. Lots of people have concerns about making the switch um, to an electric car. And some people just don't feel like they want to do. Mm. Um, can you understand that? I can, of course I can understand it because it, it's new. And cars are very personal to people. They live a lot of their lives in their car. It, it's something that they put a lot of thought and effort and also money into the purchase of a car. And it's also something that's woven into the fabric of their daily lives. People will are thinking about, well, can I visit my children or grandchildren? Or can I get to my parents without charging? And so there's a lot of decisions. It's not just simply, you know, shall I get a blue or a green one? There's a lot more to go into it. So I, I definitely do understand that anxiety. And can you understand why um, a lot of people find them confusing as well? Mm, yeah. what, are you, what are you doing to help people with that side of the transition? Uh, talking to you, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and can I just say, job. you're doing a, a fabulous job and, and we Thank need you. to you know, continue to sort of make sure that the message is getting over um, with people like yourself who are really active in this space. And, and can I just thank you for all the work that you're doing, which, oh. is, which is brilliant. But obviously we also have other um, sort of government backed uh, communications that, that it's really important that we continue with. And I think one of the things is that the, the dealer network uh, so we do work with dealers. We have invested quite a lot of time and money into um, training schemes for dealers so that they can help demystify that first purchase, particularly when someone will, walks into a dealership. Um, I think the other thing we need to continue doing is continue d just supporting people with that, that purchase, with those upfront grants, because we know that the price point can still be a little bit off-putting for people. And how long are those grants going to stay in place for? You know? Well, um, we've got a lot of certainty over the grants that are here at the moment. So they are they are confirmed for at least for the next financial year. But I think, you know, we do have to be honest about grants and any government support. 
you know, we will look to phase them out over time because we can see the markets responding and the prices are coming down. So come on, we've talked about the fact that we know um, people find making the switch confusing and a bit daunting. What would you say to those people who, you know, are worried about it, do have concerns as a, as a driver of an electric car yourself? Mm, I would say 100% make the switch. The polling and the research that we do suggest that when people have made that switch, they definitely would not go back. I think it's something like 97% of people who say they would never ever buy another petrol diesel car. So I think that speaks for itself. Yeah. What was the thing that you were most worried about that turned out not to be true? I think it probably was the whole sort of charging piece. Um, would it really work? Would I just find myself running out of charge all the time? Um, and I also say to people, most of the time when you drive, even on a long journey, you're quite able to think about the fact that, well, I'll need to stop here for petrol or I'll need to stop there and you don't run out of petrol on the motorway, but for some reason people seem to think that just because you're driving an electric car, all of that planning ability goes out of the window and you're suddenly going to find yourself with a flat battery. And the reality is just, it's just not the case. But I did have those worries. It's, it's something that's new. Until you've done it, you don't always know how easy it actually is. Um, and everybody I've spoken to who's bought an electric car, the sort of range anxiety piece has evaporated. Rachel, thanks for Great. joining me for a little drive around Westminster. <laughs> it's been a real pleasure, Ginny. Thank you so much. Okay.